Hello, today we're going to be taking a look at AT&T's Office at Hand product. Office at Hand is AT&T's unified communication as a service offering. So a lot of us who are here are probably looking at Office at Hand for a phone system. Um, and we will spend the bulk of the time looking at Office at Hand as a phone system, but um, unified communications as a service that is inclusive of some other features as well, like internal messaging, video conferencing, the phone system, fax, and then SMS texting. So let's go ahead and get into it. What we see on the left right here is a screen mirror of my personal cell phone. On the right, this is the desktop application for Office at Hand. Um, obviously, Office at Hand is a product that works very well with the physical uh, desk phone products. Um, but with Office at Hand, you're going to actually have the ability to use your business phone line on three different medias. So the desktop application, the physical phone that sits on your desk, and then the mobile app for Office at Hand. So what you'll see right now as I'm making a call from my personal cell phone into my desk line is that this phone call is actually going to ring in three different places. And there are a bunch of different ways that we can set that up. Um, but for the sake of the demonstration, it's going to be easiest to look at it on the desktop application. So as that call is coming in, you're going to see it ring on the desk phone right here. It's also ringing on my desktop application. It is also ringing on my mobile application. So the way that I have it set up is to set to ring to all three places at the same time. Um, something that people commonly use is a find me, follow me setup. Um, so what that is, is basically in most cases, it's gonna ring on the physical desk phone. And then after that, it'll ring over to a cell phone or a computer. The reason it's set up this way is to give um, flexibility to people, right? Um, the benefit to having your business line on a desktop application or a cell phone gives you the flexibility to be able to pick up those business calls no matter where you are, right? Um, so even though we might be married to our desk, most of the time we might be picking most of the calls up on the physical desk phone. If I'm sick or I need to work from home for a day, I still have access to the office line um, from my computer or from my cell phone. So again, for the sake of the demonstration, it's easy, easiest to visualize on the desktop application. So that's where we'll spend most of the time. But when we're on this call, um, you're gonna see a lot of your basic functionality that you'd have on a physical desk phone, like placing calls on speakerphone, your dial pad, conferencing a call in, as well as placing calls on hold, transferring via soft transfer, transferring direct, transferring to voicemail. You can also set up park locations, we can also do call recording. So what we see on my line, the way my line is set up right now, this is what we call on-demand call recording, which means at any point during this call, I can choose to grab a little snippet or a little bite of that call. It's very common for people to have what we call automatic call recording set up so that the beginning to, beginning to end, the entire call is going to be recorded and, and filed for you guys. Recording. One newer feature that might um, not be something that you've used before is the call flip function. So what that is, is if I pick the call up on my physical desk phone, I actually have the ability to flip it over to another endpoint. So that way, if I pick the call up on, at my desk and I wanna run out to lunch, I can switch the call over to my mobile app or my desktop app and continue that conversation without interrupting the call for the inbound caller. So obviously on the physical desk phones, we're gonna see our extensions and transfer keys. Um, you're not losing any of that on the desktop or mobile function with our HUD. So this is where you're gonna see your transfer keys and be able to make quick call control moves. Um, but everything that we've looked at so far is essentially the, the user experience from the phone's perspective um, for the end users. So this is what the employees or the people using the phone system will be using day in and day out, whether they're just using the physical phone or the rest of the applications. Um, there's a lot of features packed into here that can be um, granted to everybody or some sets of users or limited um, in, in ways that you want to. So beyond the phone function, um, we'll fly through these, but we have the internal messaging function. So this is very similar to a Slack or a Microsoft Teams chat where we can set up teams and groups and file share. Um, yeah. 
In addition to that, we also support video conferencing. So this will also probably look similar to other tools that you've used in the past where um, you can plug this video conferencing into your Outlook or your G Suite, send out invites, um, join meetings, etc. This platform also supports fax. So with fax, there are two different options. Uh, what we're looking at here is eFax. So what this is, is really like a drag and drop. Um, you type in the phone number that you want to here. Um, and similar to the way that you send an email, you're dragging and dropping a file, sending the phone number, and then it's gonna appear on their eFax or their fax machine on the other end, right? Additionally, we do support physical fax machines. Um, only caveat there is when we're setting up fax with this platform, it's either being used as an eFax or a physical fax machine. Um, if you're using a physical physical fax machine, you do not get the functionality of eFax. Additionally, with eFax, um, I would say most commonly people are actually using eFax through their email. Um, so you can type in 678-294-0899 at officehandfax.com, and then when you email that out, it's gonna um, send to that person's fax machine. I know that was a quick little crash course, but everything that we've looked at so far, that's the basic end user experience. Obviously there's more that we can go into, uh, but this is the gist of what people are gonna be using day in and day out to um, complete their phone calls, collaborate, um, and, and do their normal business operations. Now, what we're gonna look at next is how the system works from an administrative perspective. So uh, this is likely for the eyes only of managers or IT managers. Um, people who are concerned with how the calls flow, the analytics of the phone system, and setting up new employees, right? So this is the landing page of the admin portal for Office at Hand. On the right, first thing I want to point out here is your company name and your main phone number, right? So as we're talking through how we want your phone system set up, um, this is typically where we're gonna start, right? So when someone calls into AT&T to this main company phone number, what do we want to happen? To check that out, we're gonna look at the call handling and we're gonna say, well, during business hours, when someone calls into AT&T, we want it to go to maybe an auto attendant where it says press one for billing, press two for customer service, press three for general inquiries, right? There's a bunch of different ways that we can set this up. We can set this up with a greeting, a call queue, send it to a specific person, um, lots of flexibility there. A major benefit here, though, is we can actually change those settings for our closed hours. So for a more traditional business that's not maybe at the scale of AT&T, um, you don't have people in the office, you don't have people manning that phone line after 5 p.m., right? So maybe from 9 to 5, we want it to ring to everybody in the office, but after 5 p.m., we want it to go to an announcement that says, thank you for calling my auto shop. Uh, we are open from 9 to 5. Please give us a call back during operating hours. Obviously, we can set up voicemail as well if, if you want to manage a voicemail, but um, or forward it to a specific person after hours. But gives you some flexibility there. That way, you can choose whether you want to manage an email or manage a voicemail inbox, um, or choose whether you want to direct the calls to just call back during business hours, um, or send it to a specific person who may be responsible for those after hours calls. We'll fly through this, but additionally, we have sets of custom rules that, that say basically if a specific phone number calls into this line, we want it routed in a custom way. Or um, maybe we want our business hours and closed hours to be pretty universal throughout the year, but on Christmas and Thanksgiving, we don't want any calls coming in. We want to set a custom message. That's where you'd have this capability. So in that event, say we have during business hours, someone calls in and we want them to go to an auto attendant you're gonna have the ability to come in and set this IVR menu. We'll pick on this auto part store as an example, where you can either upload an audio or do a text-to-speech that says, thank you for calling my auto part store, press one for domestic, two for imports, three for operator. Also point out here, we do support dial by name directory, so if that's something you wanna do, yeah, you absolutely can. And the reason I show this is because um, it's kind of nice to visualize because it is, it is very simple to change, right? Um, if there's an emergency and people are out of the office for the day, you can literally come in here and say, we are closed today. Um, and direct the calls differently than you might on a normal day, right? Um, and then after you set that prompt, either via the audio or text-to-speech, this is where you're determining when someone presses one, I want them to go to 
a group, right? Or two, I want them to go to an individual person. Seven, I want them to go to a dial by name directory. So when someone's calling in, we're going to pretend they called into, they press one and they want to connect to our support line, right? And maybe that support line is supported by a bunch of different people. So when they press one, they're going to go to group one, two, three. And this is where we can look at our call cues and say, we'll pick on call center lead. When someone presses one to reach support, we want it to ring to all of these people and I want it to ring simultaneously. So that means everybody's phone's gonna ring at the same time. Whoever picks it up fastest is gonna be the one to handle it. Um, obviously some flexibility here so we can do longest idle. This is making sure that everyone gets a even workload basically on the phones or a fixed order. So almost a hierarchy, right? Um, Eli might be the best at handling these support calls and Sam might not be as good. So we want it to ring through Eli, DeMontrez and Brian before it reaches Sam. And this is also where you would customize your, your call hold settings, your wait settings. Um, how long do we want people to wait before we're going to direct them to voicemail? Um, some, some active queue management kind of things. Obviously, there's a lot of different settings and a lot of customization we can do here kind of just talking through the basics. Um, so this is a point where I will say, if, if you have some more advanced questions or more detailed questions, definitely reach out to your sales team and, and we're happy to do a more tailored demo for you. One of the next biggest pieces that I wanna point out is our users. So this is a user-based build system. So you're built by the amount of users on the platform. The reason for this is uh, it's not uncommon for businesses to have a main company line. And when someone calls on that main company line, there could be six to eight different people taking that phone call, right? Um, so we want to make sure that everyone's gonna have access to that phone system. Everyone's gonna be able to make and receive calls, even if they're all sharing a phone line. Obviously though, there's no problem with giving people direct dial number lines as we see right here. Um, but the reason I point out the users right here is for a couple reasons, right? You can see that they have different roles here. So this is where we're going to set who is the admin of the system, who maybe just wants to look at the analytics or who's going to be managing that queue. Um, you can really tailor down the role of the admin or the user within the user settings right here. Additionally, for onboarding and, and bringing on new people or letting people go, we have the ability to very easily grab Jason, Joe, Brian, Bryant, um, and we can actually get rid of their user. Um, and then when I hire somebody else, it's just as easy to come in and send them their own credentials so that they can log in. And the major benefit to this is um, this is a user-based build platform, like I mentioned earlier. So you can actually scale it down or up um, based on the amount of actual people you have that need access to that phone system, right? Um, so you're really only going to be paid for, or paying for the amount that you're actually using there. Um, and that the billing does update in real time. Um, the additional benefit though is in the event that Jason and Joe quit on the same day and I want to take them out of that phone system and say they're both sales reps for specific geographies, what I can do is I can retain their phone numbers, keep that direct dial number because maybe a bunch of customers know that phone number, right? Direct those to their manager. And then when I have a backfill for these people, point them back to the new people. That way they, they have um, some inbound calls coming in. The last thing that we'll take a look at here is the call log. Um, so like I showed earlier, um, this is the call recording from that call that I had earlier. This is the same one that I did on that demo. Um, so you're going to have a lot of information baked into here. This call log, as opposed to call analytics, this is really for hunting down specific calls. So maybe we know that a specific customer um, called in last Friday between noon and two o'clock. Um, this is where we'd filter down and try to find that call, see who talked to them, how long did they talk, uh, was there a call recording associated, et cetera. At a broader level, we have a separate analytics portal and this can be very highly customized um, before we actually look at it. This, this analytics, portal candidly is typically consumed via email reports. So um, typically IT managers or, or the admins of the phone system will come in and set the parameters of the information that they are concerned with um, and then have those reports pushed out to them on a weekly, daily, monthly basis. Um, but with these analytics, you can drill down to specific user groups, specific call queues, specific phone numbers, and 
see a lot of different information, right? So how how quickly was that call handled on average? How many inbound calls did that number receive? How many outbound calls did it issue? Um, and if there were any quality concerns or issues there as well. Um, and this can obviously be filtered down over a massive date range, right? Um, but this is a super powerful tool for a bunch of different reasons. Number one, you can kind of measure your um, employees against each other and see, you know, we have person A handling three times the amount of calls as person B. Um, is that where we need to step in from a managerial perspective and, and tell them that they need to get their numbers up, right? Um, also very commonly used for things like advertising, right? If uh, we did a plumbing company a couple of weeks ago that did billboards on the side of the interstate, right? And their vision and what, what they're doing now is they're spinning up new phone numbers for new billboards that they put out. And what that's doing for them is they can actually measure how productive that billboard was for them. You know, billboard at this location on the side of the interstate between these two exits is generating 100 new calls a month, whereas billboard three miles down the road is generating 20 calls a month. So maybe we want to spend more marketing dollars on that billboard. Um, very simple example, but there's a lot. Um, from a marketing and ad perspective that that you can, a lot of information that you can gather out of this. So these call analytics are not something that people have traditionally used in the past, but uh, forward thinking for your business, is, it can be a really powerful tool. So other than that, I know we only looked through a few pieces here. I was kind of trying to cherry pick the most commonly um, asked questions and most common needs. But again, if you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to your sales team. We're happy to do um, some more in-depth Q&A and really try to understand your setup. But thank you for the time and thank you for listening. And do not hesitate to reach out if you have more questions.